This is Warren Vanderhill working on the Muncie Jewish Oral History Project. This evening, Tuesday evening, April 17, 1979, I am talking with Archie Lappin and his wife, Ida Gold Lappin, at their home here in Muncie, Indiana. And Mrs. Lappin, I'd like to begin with you, if I may, uh, since we're doing sort of a, a round robin here with your husband and yourself and myself. And I'd like you to tell me a little bit uh, about your parents where they came from, uh, how they happened to come to the Midwest. Well, they came, uh, my mother came from uh, Russia, and my father came um, from Poland uh, around 1905. And uh, they, uh, from New York, they went to Indianapolis, and they, uh, my father worked there for two a couple years uh, as a... Uh, is that what you want to know? Yes, yes. As a uh, peddler. And then he uh, uh, came to, uh, he was peddling uh, around, and he came, and uh, he met Mr. Ziegler, Max Ziegler, and uh, and uh, they became acquainted, and, and they both became, they uh, were partners in this junk business for several years. And um, uh, that didn't go too well, so he opened up uh, his own uh, men's furnishing store. Was this downtown in uh, yes, Muncie? Yes, right downtown. Mm -hmm. So the basic reason that uh, your father came to Muncie from Indianapolis was economic opportunity. That's right. I see. That's right. Okay. What kind of clothing store did he have downtown? Uh, how how would you characterize it? Completely Sewing? men. Completely uh, mm -hmm. men's furnishing or men's uh, clothing. And he owned the store by himself? Yes, he did. My mother worked there part of the time to help out. Okay. When were you born? Maybe I shouldn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is for the historical record. That's okay. okay. 1913. 1913. Uh -huh. Did you also uh, help around the store? Was that part of the family tradition? Well, um, after I got a little older, uh, I did uh, help out on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was, uh, oh, you know, sometime later. Uh, when I was around 14, 15 years old, 16 years old. But of course, I got married quite early, so uh, that ended my uh, career as a sales lady. <laughs> well, that leads me to switch to your husband for a moment, and I'd like mm -hmm. uh, to have you, Mr. Lappin, tell us a bit about your parents, where the connection is with the old country. Perhaps that goes back farther than one generation. Yes. Uh, he came, he and my mother both uh, emigrated from. Poland. It's a uh, Russian Poland. It's a town, a border town, uh, in 1902. And uh, he was a tailor by trade and graduated upwards from the tailoring, from the uh, uh, just a tailor shop to finally having a manufacturing concern of ladies' garments, undergarments, and dresses. And uh, in the late uh, 20s, uh, it was a, uh, a sort of uh, a promotion uh, which was done by many small towns to induce factories from Chicago to come to smaller areas where they could have uh, more plentiful labor and cheaper labor. And so uh, in the late 20s, maybe 27, 28, uh, he was uh, contacted by the Chamber of Commerce of Hartford City, who induced him then with uh, various uh, um, uh, programs of uh, uh, financing and uh, um, places uh, to a uh, place to uh, for his uh, establishment for his business to come to, uh, to Hartford City, where he had a business and continued to have business until the Depression hit in 1929. In the meantime, since Hartford City had maybe five or six Jewish families, and it was customary to come to Muncie, which had more of a Jewish community, for the people in the surrounding towns to come to Muncie, to the temple, and to uh, partake of other com Jewish community events. 
In that way, they became acquainted with Ida's parents, and through them, we became acquainted. In other words, there was an organization, which you know, know I'm sure, uh, B'nai B'rith, mm -hmm. uh, which is a Jewish fraternal organization. My father became a member and would come to Muncie to their affairs and to their meetings, and then became acquainted with Mr. Gold. And then uh, followed the usual course of them coming to <laughs> Hartford City to visit us, and we from Hartford City to visit them, and that's how the romance developed. Oh, I see. When were you married? What uh, year? 1930. 1930. 1930. The depression begins yeah. in 1929. Oh, yeah. You get married in 1930. That's right. Yeah. It was still a depression too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, what what effect uh, did the depression uh, have, Mrs. Lappin, on your father's business? Well. Uh, he, he was going along pretty well, didn't he? He was, yeah, he was he, pretty by that successful. time, he, he was yeah. established. Yeah, he opened up his store in 1909 and continued to operate for 40 years, mm -hmm. retired in 1949. And it was a well-established store. And, of course, like any other businesses, uh, it was off during that sure. time. But uh, He did he, pretty well he because it, he catered to the uh, uh, working class. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think he... Uh, I didn't hit his type of business as much as it did the uh, larger concerns, you know. In fact, in fact uh, I think, uh, if anything, that, that helped business it. helped it was, mm -hmm. was not hurt, it was helped. Yes. Because of the cheaper, more moderate price merchandise mm -hmm. that he sold. So people who would buy it. Better clothing, we're, we're buying uh, cheaper clothes. Cheaper clothes. Mm -hmm. well, you know, this is just a, a question as a sort of aside. I've had so many people I've interviewed during the course of this project comment on retail merchants and particularly individuals who sold men's clothing. Mm -hmm. And usually they'll say, uh, my father, my grandfather sold clothing to uh, the middle class or mm -hmm. the members of the working class. So I would just, for the record, raise this question. Who sold clothing to the upper class in Muncie <laughs> at that time? Where did they buy their clothing, or did they buy their clothing outside of you the You mean, community? were there other Jewish merchants? There were yeah. Jewish merchants that had uh, better better oh, prices yeah. of the merchandise, yes. Mm -hmm. sure. Well, there was... Uh, like Pearl Sh I mean, uh, uh, Ray, Ray's uh, dad sold well, not better, not, not uh, better than ours. Yeah, but a little better, but then there was Stanley, you know, with Richie's. Well, and uh, yeah, there was a, what was Mr. Indorf's uh, store? It was, That's right. You know, uh, yeah, I've heard the name Indorf. Yeah, uh, but, Charles. Yeah. So Indorf. these are people who sold better quality yeah. lines. Yes, they did. Uh -huh. I see. Of course, in those days, you know, better quality. If a suit was, there was uh, Mr. 35, Levy. forty dollars, that was that better was quality. Classy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Uh -huh. Nowadays, uh, Levy had a yeah. had a store yeah, here, had and um, of course. There were merchants who sold better quality. Well, as you reflect on this, Dale, as you look back, would you say that this particular area of Muncie's retail life was largely dominated by members of the Jewish community? Yes. That when you yes. think of cl men's clothing... Oh, wait, wait, in, in the clothing and the jewelry well, I uh, agree, I agree industry with you. or yeah. line... And, uh, and so, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, sure. You're right. And even before Pa, there was the, uh, oh, again with an A. What? A, you know, that Antwerp or Ant, oh. Well, I don't know. well, I can remember okay. just vaguely the, the oh, different they story. they spoke about, well, yeah. I don't know. But I think you're right. It, it's true. There were uh, some, yeah, there was some. Um, there were Schuster's, was uh -huh. it? Was it a big store? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Marx yeah, had a right. very big, uh, that's right. Okay. Big, uh, and I do. <laughs> big men's furnishing. Cal Meyer was the head of uh, Stillman's, which was a big firm. Oh, and head of Stillman's, honey. He had his own store. And then later he did, didn't he? Uh, didn't Cal Meyer? Mm -hmm. I can remember. Novick was uh, was yeah, the general Novick, manager. Yeah. Still Did uh, your parents have any formal training for the jobs that no. they held? No. No formal no, education. No, they came over when they were. Uh, well, my father was uh, about 19, 20 years old. That's all. Mm -hmm. 
So, and, you know, they were just kids, actually. He was very successful in, in uh, real estate investment. This is also true of... Uh, of no, your... not my father, no. My father remained in manufacturing uh, business, and then when the Depression hit, he, he returned to Chicago. And, and left he, Hartford City. Right, left Hartford City, yeah. yeah. He went back to Chicago? Went back and then to he, Chicago. So he never came back to this part of Indiana? No. No, yeah. no, no except to visit. Yeah. Uh, time to time. And the Depression was the cause of this? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. We were getting notices of bankruptcies in the mail every day. Yeah. <laughs> What uh, sorts of things do you remember about the Jewish community as young people growing up here? Are there any features of it that particularly stick out in your minds? Uh, now, I don't would, uh, would remember. You went to Sunday school? Well, frankly, I didn't temple. go that much to Sunday school. See, my folks were quite religious. And uh, they were Orthodox, and the, and the, our community uh, was more reformed. Uh, yeah, yeah, reformed. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, no, I don't think I wouldn't say I went to Saint School mm -hmm. quite. I mean, we were. Uh, you attended the. We the attended the synagogue uh, in, Indiana right. in Indianapolis. That's right. But mm -hmm. had some connections here with the temple. Yeah, we were friends. Uh, we were friendly and all that. But uh, when it came to um, our holidays, we went to Indianapolis. Cause, as I say, my folks because there was an religious. Orthodox uh, congregation there. There, in Indianapolis, yeah. not here. Were there any other Jewish families in Muncie who did that, who were Orthodox that went to Indianapolis rather than uh, yeah. the temple here? Yes. Uh, the the, the, yeah, the Zigglers. Your uncle, the Watkins. Yeah, the Watkins, that's right. Mm -hmm. Who else was that religious? The Dabros. The Dabros. Yeah. The older Dabros, not mm -hmm. the ones that you uh, are yeah. going to uh, uh -huh. interview. I guess you're going to interview the Dabros. Yes. yes. Or maybe Sam already. already. No, yeah. I haven't yet. That's oh. one that I have yet to, uh, what to do. Well, as, as you look at this community, what would you say about the relationships in Muncie between the Jewish community and the non-Jewish community? In what respect? I mean, oh, do you relations? think that they have uh, that these two communities have always gotten along very well? If, if, that there have always been cordial relationships between the two communities? Of course, you go back before I do. I think what you did was there anything that your dad ever said about the no. about the way he uh, was received as far well, as Well, I think didn't? he was received very well. He was highly yeah. thought of. Oh really. yeah, I, I I can't say anything against the non Jewish. Uh, people when, as, a, as I was growing yeah. up. So you don't recall him uh, ever saying anything of a negative nature about that? Well, how about your own life? I mean, have there ever been any incidents that you can think of? I really don't. Uh, not, uh, well, you know, it's natural that we have, uh, we do feel a little resentment at, at one time or another, but to say that I actually felt badly or hurt. That uh, the kids called you uh, bad names? Never. Or, uh, never. They never cried. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I can't say that. Have you ever heard me? No. No. No, I don't. No, no. Could you tell me a little bit, Mrs. Lappin, about your education? I really didn't have enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's been my, uh, my gripe. <laughs> You're self-educated. No, I'm not that educated. Well, you went through uh, the high yeah, school. Oh, high school, that's all. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But uh, because, as I say, we got, I was married. Uh, I mean, uh, we were married when I was quite young. <laughs> my my husband had his, uh, his education. Yeah, well, I'll turn that to you, Mr. Uh -huh. Lappin. I know you are an attorney here in town. Can you tell me about your education? Yes, well, I had the usual, of course, uh, high school education. I had two years of pre-law and three years of law school. Where did you go to law school? John Marshall Law School in Chicago. Oh, yeah. He was a poor boy. <laughs> he worked his way through yeah. school. Uh, well, tell, sure tell me a bit about that. What was he it sure like did. at that time to work your way through? We're talking about the Depression again, I assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Uh, well, uh, it was a matter of uh, going to school days and working afternoons and evenings. What kind of job? What kind of job? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, most anything you can think of. But... Uh, uh, this was the, these were the years when uh, 
the movie houses were developing. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know that from New York. And uh, the firm of Balvin and Katz was a very big firm. And of course, what better job for a boy who gets out uh, of school at about uh, 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon than to be an usher. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, uh, I spent several years in several of the theaters in Chicago. One was the Chicago Theater downtown on State Street, the other was the, the Uptown Theater on Broadway in Chicago. You and the post office? Uh, yes, I worked in the post office for a couple of years. God, I got to start to think of it. You were a shoe salesman? <laughs> Great right. variety. Saturdays, uh, Saturdays was the uh, shoe salesman. Downtown stores, O'Connor and Goldberg. Mm -hmm. uh, to name a few, Boston store, the oh, fair yeah. Yeah. in Chicago. A lot of famous places. Yeah. What made you decide to come back to Muncie to practice law? Well, he was well, here. my father was he here, was here right. during the time that I was in law school, and uh, when I graduated, I figured, uh, I mean, from law school, mm -hmm. that perhaps uh, my training could help in in the business, so I came here to Hartford City. And uh, in the meantime, I met Ida, and business started to go bad. And when my father decided to go back to Chicago, I uh, started to think about actually hanging my shingle out, mm. which I did in 1931. And you've been practicing law here in Muncie since 1931? Mm -hmm. 1931. You're one of the veterans of the, one of the sure. legal community. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Not quite the dean yet, but... Uh, close. <laughs> close, I think, to me. Who's older, Walter White? Mm -hmm. there, there are two or three that are, mm -hmm. are older. Mrs. Yeah. Lappin, you mentioned uh, the fact that your family used to go to Indianapolis to mm -hmm. attend Orthodox services. Would you uh, then say that religious life was very important in your family? At that time it was. Well, yes. It was pretty, uh, quite important. Yeah. When we should say that your parents mellowed. Uh, uh, a great and deal, so, and oh, became yes. more involved with with the temple here. Yeah, became we members, years. and we became quite active oh, yes. in in, oh, yes. in our mm -hmm. temple. It was reformed, but of course they they became exposed to mm -hmm. to the other Jewish people here mm -hmm. uh, who were in the temple and were members of the neighborhood. And uh, mm -hmm. her mother sister became head. a mother, uh, uh, sister a, a member of the sisterhood. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we had a lot of activity around the temple over the years. Mm -hmm. So this was something that changed gradually yes, in your uh, family. Yeah, they, it really did. Uh, they gradually, I may not be putting this properly, but let me say they went away from a more orthodox position yes, to, to a to more a reformed. Yeah, I'd say to a certain ex uh, degree, yes. And this may be throwing you a bit of a curve, but to what do you attribute that? Why do you think that they did that? Is well, there any particular reason? Well, it, you know, you uh, make acquaintances, mm -hmm. and after all... Uh, and friendships. And mm -hmm. Pardon me? Friendships. And yeah, the that's what I said. Yeah. And, and uh, it's uh, when you're with friends, you do, uh, you want to uh, be with them. And going to Indianapolis for just two, three days for our holidays, it was a little hard. Yeah. And, uh, and Gretch, and as I say, when you make friends, you uh, want to be with them. And I think they, as my husband said, uh, they did meddle. And they did get away from this uh, Orthodox religious to a certain extent. Not uh, completely, uh, would you say? No. No, they, no, they, they no. would uh, uh, go into extent. Indianapolis, but less frequently as the years went by. Mm -hmm. Was the temple here also a center for social activities? Oh, yes. What kinds of activities did people engage well, in? Well, we had dinners. Uh, we worked at, so had dinners and, uh, and uh, what else did they have? Well, parties, uh, card parties. We, uh, and then they had uh, speakers would come in. We had meetings there. Our sisterhood meetings were always held there. Of course, the B'nai B'rith meetings, temple meetings were held at the temple, and uh, we did uh, congregate quite a bit right there. Celebrated the, the holidays. That's right. And the uh, kids, of course, our kids all went to Sunday school, and they had uh, fairs, plays, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. things like that. It was, uh, it actually was a center of community life, yeah, of social life. It was pretty active for a while. Mm-hmm. For so, a, now you say for a while. For I, I, I then would read into that, that this is not the case any longer. No, it isn't. It's not well, as, it isn't as far as we're, we're concerned, concerned. No, because right. a good many of the people right, totally uh, that before. we uh, were friendly with either have passed on or retired from the community. You know, like they went to Florida, went mm-hmm. to California, and somehow uh, we became less uh, less active. Mm-hmm. Now, which is not to say that they don't have a a, a, a nice active community now, and uh, as far as we know, yeah. as far as we know, and I'm still a member of the neighborhood, yeah. I, and uh, and I'm a member of the temple, but I'm sure that they have affairs that we don't participate in. And a lot of this, you think, would be due to age. I think Mostly, so. Yes, yeah. I, I really do. They're younger people. Mm-hmm. Quite a bit younger, in fact. Just mm-hmm. actually, you know, there are only a few of the old timers left. I know uh, that. Mar- Mar- interviewing Mar- people. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Marty, uh, Marty, and uh, the Pagels. Well, yeah, that's right, and the Pagels. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the reasons we're doing the project. Uh, yeah, with the older and, ones. Well, try, that's right, to try and get the viewpoints of people who have been here for um, a period of time. Mr. Laffin, you mentioned uh, before we actually began taping this interview uh, that you were familiar with some aspects of anti-Semitism in this community. I wonder if you could comment yeah. on that just a bit. Yes, when I came here, uh, the Klan was in decline. It was, uh, as I, I understand, before I came in the 20s, it, it was quite uh, uh, a, uh, an important organization right. around here, a lot of members, uh, but uh, it was in decline. And I went into the office of uh, Mr. Benedum, who had formerly been very active in the Klan, organizer, etc. An attorney, he went himself uh, to mm-hmm. work for him. The, the feeling was, although I, I myself don't, has never, uh, in my experience in contact with Benedum, have never felt any, any, uh, anything or nothing ever occurred which would give me the impression that he was uh, anti-Semitic, but he, the talk was that he went into it for the money. (laughs) But in in any event, uh, as far as I was concerned, he was uh, a benefactor. He he gave me a chance to to get acquainted with the community and get my feet set in the law. And uh, I I didn't uh, know of any activities when I came, any plan activity, but I'd heard a lot of it. But uh, a few years afterwards, a man came to the community by the name of Court Asher, who evidently had been a friend of Benedum's, and I met him in, his, in Benedum's office. And shortly thereafter, he, he was said to be a newspaper man, had been a, a reporter on Chicago newspaper, and then got involved with the law and did time, came back to Muncie, and uh, started this x-ray. Well, even though uh, I was in Benedum's office and a friend of Benedum, who was friendly with him, uh, he still did not deny me the uh, publicity of the, and the notoriety of his newspaper. <laughs> and I made the front page quite often. You know. This is in the x-ray paper? Yeah, in the x-ray, yeah. yeah. Jew communist laughing and so forth. Which, you know, was just... Uh, I used to, I used to look at it with with a with a great deal of ridicule. To me, it was it was just funny, you know, the things that were said. But uh, but it was vicious. It was vicious. It was untrue, and it came out uh, uh, weekly. And I'm sure that some people may have been uh, influenced by it. But I can't say that there was any. Uh, event or incident or conduct of anyone with whom I had any relationships that would give me the reason to believe that they were being uh, anti-Semitic to me. Did Uh, Asher have much of a following during that period? (laughs) 
I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I didn't think uh, so. Either. He was looked upon as a crackpot, mm -hmm. pure and simple. Mm -hmm. And he had some guys who uh, were anti-Semitic that were feeding him some money and uh, giving him contributions. And uh, he used it for the purpose of uh, uh, his, uh, his vicious Thank paper. Uh, but uh, I don't think it influenced uh, many people. Mm. And uh, we had, you know, some few small incidents where we would uh, contact our anti-defamation league, you know, the Nate Brit. Right. And uh, at that time, uh, the the attack was ignore them because to recognize them and to fight them was to yeah. just give them yeah. uh, publicity and give them ammunition. Right. And so, of course, those tactics have changed as far as Jewish people are concerned mm -hmm. since, too. Oh, yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. Mrs. Lappin, you mentioned that uh, you were active in the sisterhood. Have there been other organizations, uh, either within the Jewish community or outside the Jewish community, that you have been interested in? Well, I was quite active with the Red Cross. Yeah. And then um, at the hospital, I did quite a bit of found You're talking work. about uh, non-Jewish? Oh, yeah, yeah both. Both Jewish. Well, Hadassah, too. Well, oh, that's yeah. a Jewish. Uh, oh, yeah, both, I'm both. just starting with the <laughs> yeah. non-Jewish. Okay. Yeah. With the, uh, and then, of course, with the Girl Scouts. Oh, yeah, and brownies our girls and were going up. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I was active in, the, uh, in our temple, I mean, in the sisterhood. Mm -hmm. And the, and then we have the Anderson Muncie, uh, I mean, the uh, Anderson Muncie chapter of Adasa. Mm -hmm. And I was quite active with that yeah. organization. Have you held any offices in these organizations? Uh, with the lawyers' wives, too. Yeah. I forgot about uh -huh. that. Uh, I was the uh, uh, treasurer of the lawyers' wives, and then uh, I was the treasurer of the sisterhood for one term. Mm -hmm. Secretary of the Hadassah, too. And sector of the Hadassah. So you've had a lot of things to occupy your time. Yeah, lots well, of children. In addition right? to family, yeah. That's uh -huh. right. Well, tell me just a little bit about your family. How many children do you have? We Where have are two, they? Uh, two daughters. And, uh, Where are they living? Uh, well, one is living in um, uh, Creek or St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. uh, they married one, and, and um, Florence is living in Big Rapids, Michigan. And uh, our youngest daughter is married to uh, an uh, attorney. And she has three children, and um, Florence is teaching in Big Rapids. Mm -hmm. she, she like it up there? Florence? In Big Florence? Rapids. Yeah. Yes, she loves it's it. It's God's country. Yeah. <laughs> you really think yeah. so? Huh? I it's do. Pretty cold. I love it. Yeah, it's cold, but you get used to it. That's yeah. what she said. Yeah. 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 It's not it's sneaky the way it is around here. Oh, really? No, but no, really. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And the hunting, she brought in a deer onesie. Oh, <laughs> That's good. It's a snowmobile and... Well, Mr. Yeah, Lappin, what uh, organizations have you been interested in, both within and without Jewish communities? Oh, well, uh, I've been interested, of course, uh, in the B'nai B'rith, and I went through all the chairs there, you know, from secretary, treasurer, president, and, of course, the temple. I was president for several years of the, of the temple here, of our uh, congregation. Uh, a member of the Munster Bar Association, American Bar Association, Indiana State Bar Association. Um, I suppose uh, that generally covers most of the activities. So, you, uh, again, you've also been very busy in all activities yeah. Yeah. that have commanded a lot of your time beyond just the requirements of your profession. That's right. <laughs> Other organizations like Postmasters and uh, mm -hmm. things like that that you uh, pick up over the to over you, the years. Keep you busy. Keep, yeah. Well, let me ask you one reflective question, one final question. I'd like to have each of you comment on, and that is, what do you think the future of the Jewish community is here in Muncie, Mrs. Lappin? Well, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I don't, I really, uh, I'm not that uh, good of a counselor in, uh, um, in uh, knowing what the future is going to be, but um, I don't think there is much of a future. That's my honest yeah. belief, because um, I don't think there's enough coming in, 
and uh, uh, you mean my new new mm -hmm. new family so. new family <coughs> and I don't think the people are uh, are as active as we were they're not that interested I, I think that the older uh, um, people I think we were uh, a little bit more de dedicated I really feel that way. You think there are too many other competing interests for people's time? Mm -hmm. I've had some well, uh, people tell me that. I don't know. Uh, the younger uh, generation, I don't think they want to uh, put themselves out that much as uh, mm -hmm. you know, as we did. We really uh, went in and worked, I think, where these younger people, perhaps they're just as interested, but uh, you have to... Uh, I think uh, Mrs. Lappin, and now I'd like to get your husband's viewpoint on the future of the Jewish community in Muncie. Well, I disagree uh, that uh, there that the future is not uh, a bright one for the Jewish community. Uh, I think there has been a a changing uh, type of community, but not necessarily one that uh, uh, isn't uh, still active. Changing in this respect that um, formerly the community was made up of, uh, of uh, shopkeepers and uh, and businessmen, uh, operators of uh, stores, of businesses on Walnut Street, as you pointed out. Uh, now, uh, the people the people who are coming into town are coming in as a result of the university. Uh, they're more. Uh, faculty people, and perhaps a little bit uh, more um, uh, educated, actually, uh, which, and the fact that we think maybe it's not quite as active is because maybe we ourselves are not as active as we were, because we don't relate too well uh, to the younger people, not to the fact that they have to be uh, better educated, but the fact that we just don't uh, don't fit in uh, so far as the age group is concerned. But uh, from what I understand, they, they are active, and they, and they do get well, together. They do get together, but uh, have they advanced? Uh, when I was a, a, a young girl, we had just a small uh, room upstairs. That was our temple, right? Yeah, on Main Street. Yeah, well, I heard about it. That's right. So don't you think... When I was, a, a, from the time I was a child to uh, adult, I think there was quite an advancement. I think we had, uh, the, the uh, community worked and uh, came up to where we had a temple. We had uh, quite a community, I mean, quite a community. What have they produced, these younger people? Well, they, they've maintained we the have st We are on a standstill, right? We have been on a standstill as far as the community is concerned for many, for quite a number of years. Well, that's largely because the community has gotten smaller, don't you think? I mean, uh, there, you said that they're, they're not being replaced by other Jewish families that are coming. That's in. right. But uh, what have they done to uh, elevate it? No, I, I think we, I think the older people have, uh, they, they progressed much more rapidly than the younger group. I think it stopped. It's on a plateau. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's, That's an interesting it. way to leave it. <laughs> I think it has. So, so as far as you would mm -hmm. see the Jewish community, then you think there's a sort of plateau model. Absolutely. I really do feel that way. Well, then, obviously, if you're on a plateau, you can go on to the next one or you can fall back. So the community is sort of at a standstill point, as you suggest. Yes, I don't see any any uh, advancement. I mean, what have they produced? At least, uh, as I say, when I, as I was growing up, at least we, uh, the, the older generation, they uh, wanted a temple. They, had, they strived for something better, for something bigger. What have they? What have the uh, newer, the young uh, people? What have they strive? What are they striving for? I don't see any, anything, uh, any better than what we had. Uh, well, within what, the past what, twenty-five years. What, but with lesser people, and uh, lesser people of means, 
they have maintained the the temple. They have maintained the Sunday school. They do mm-hmm. have a uh, uh, a rabbi, a weekly rabbi. No, it's every other week. Was it bi-weekly? Mm-hmm. No? I think it is. Yeah, I think I heard that. Sometimes. Is it bi-weekly? I think it is yeah, bi-weekly. I heard it. Uh, where, over the years, we have had a regular rabbi. Yes. We have been able Absolutely to. Absolutely, we did. Uh, and these were the things that she's talking about working mm-hmm. for, uh, working to improve the temple, working to, to, for example, buy equipment for the kitchen. And, and there's more uh, and small, younger the, children the now. Various other projects mm-hmm. that they had mm-hmm. over the years, and to, and to have a regular, uh, maintain a regular rabbi. Mm-hmm. But the fact remains that they do have a Sunday school, and they well. do, and and uh, they're maintaining it uh, with, with lesser people, probably lesser income. Well, uh, if anything, uh, lesser per capita income, mm-hmm. but still greater expenses, greater overall expenses, and um, I think Ida. What Ida means is that. There, there isn't any apparent progress, right. and and you think mm-hmm. the future is them, but I I can't help but feel mm-hmm. that uh, that those that are here are maintaining a, a, a fair degree of activity. And you well, feel you both feel there'll always be a Jewish community. Well, there'll always be, but socially, Arch, is that what you uh, sure? You said they are, they'll always have an activity. Are you speaking of uh, social life, or are you speaking uh, of the of our uh, uh, religious? Yeah, right. of our temple, of our religious uh, well, social life. Yes, as far as they having parties and all that in their homes. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the temple, of our temple. Community social life. Yes. There, there, Affairs. We don't have as much as we had. Uh-uh. No, I'm sorry. We don't have as many people either. Well, uh, we didn't have such a large group when I was a little girl, but they really worked. When you were, am I not right? You're right. When you were I younger, Mr. Right. Lappin, uh, people have said that there were some organizations of young people that involved. Uh, both men and women, Jewish men and women, young adults, I guess would be the phrase they'd use now, in a lot of different communities in this part of the state. Uh, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. That you had uh, Jewish people in Marion and Anderson and Muncie who would occasionally get together. Well, right. uh, yeah. yeah. And, and, as yeah. young adult organizations. I've had some people mention that they used to have some get-togethers. Well, yeah, it's just but I would, that much. No, I would assume that doesn't happen much that anymore. Much. There were people from the surrounding town, mm-hmm. like I mentioned, from Hartford City. Right. There were also yeah. people that uh, joined from Newcastle, uh-huh. and Anderson mm-hmm. had members here yeah. for a while because they had. Well, because there red, were things to do uh, here. That's why. Yeah, Red Key and uh, Portland. So, yeah, had, that's true. Had, uh, because there people was would come in. This was a set, sort of a center here. This was a focal point. A focal point. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, but there isn't that much going on now, Arch. I'm sorry. I disagree with you. We, <laughs> that's what I like. That's uh-huh. The stuff of history. Different interpretations of, of events. Well, I would like to thank both of you for giving me your time and participating in this project. This has been Warren Vanderhill speaking with Archie Lappin and Ida Lappin in their home here in Muncie, Indiana, Tuesday evening, April 17, 1979.